Alright guys, welcome back to Ricky's Corner, episode 10. Today for episode 10, what we're going to do is combine all three subject matters of politics, sports, and current events into one episode like we did for episode 1. So let's get down to it. Um, our sports lead, which is basically going to take us on various subjects. First, we're going to start off with the Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors, a team I do not like. The question is, will they win the title again? Will they win three titles in a row? Will they three-peat? It's hard to win a title. It's even harder to, to repeat, let alone to win it for three years in a row. The kind of mental focus, teamwork, consistency, the mental and physical uh, endurance is really, really tough. Really, really tough. I mean, the last um, team to three-peat were the LA Lakers back in uh, with Shaq and Kobe and Phil Jackson. And before them, it was the Chicago Bulls, the second of their three-peat titles uh, back with Michael Pippen and Phil. Extremely difficult to do, like I said. I don't think the Golden State Warriors are going to win the title for three years in a row. I don't think they're going to win this year. Um, call me crazy. Call me whatever. Um, I've been seeing cracks on this team for a while. Everything from chemistry. Now you got an injury to Ke uh, Kevin Durant. Probably not going to be back until the finals. Uh, I don't see it. Their defense. Bottom line, I think Milwaukee Bucks. The Milwaukee Bucks are going to beat them in the um, in a championship uh, series. So got a little wager going on at work. We'll see. But I don't think Golden State is going to win. What do you think? Now, moving on to um, to another subject. Now, Golden State, to get to the uh, to the Western Conference Finals, where they're playing Portland, they they beat the Houston Rockets and James Harden. And James Harden, I, I was so tired of hearing about James Harden. All this, oh, he's great, and his three-point shots, and his step-back shots, and what a revolutionary season, and what a revolutionary offensive player. This, this, and that. You know what, Kevin? Um, James Harden, he's overrated. He's overrated. Where was he in the playoffs? Did he score more points in these playoffs than he did during the regular season? The answer is no. He had this great offensive season in the regular season. He scored 36.1 points per game, I believe. He had like eight 50-point games in a regular season. And where was he in the playoffs? Especially against Golden State. You got eliminated again, James. And the Rockets eliminated again. So it doesn't matter what kind of offensive season you had. You couldn't really do it in the playoffs. You scored less points in these playoffs than you did in the regular season. So how does that work? How does that work with the superstar the man who's supposed to carry his team. You did worse work than he did in the regular season. That's not supposed to work that way. You're supposed to up your game. When things get tough, when things get toughest, you know, it's win or go home. And obviously you did not win and you went home. So James Harden overrated. Now moving on to Kawhi Leonard. He's underrated. So he's been having um, a fantastic year, um, especially his first year with Toronto after that messy, messy divorce with San Antonio and Popovich and that whole disconnect there. He's having a fantastic, fantastic season and impact all the way around. So kudos to Kawhi Leonard, a two-way player who's proven that he really is clutch and he's handling himself beautifully. Now, moving on to Magic Johnson um, and Kobe Bryant, both these former Lakers, having an impact one way or the other on their organization. So first, let's take a look at Kobe Bryant. Um, you know, alpha male, alpha player, superstar, yes, one of the best shooting guards of all time, without a doubt, but you're ruining your organization. Um, that's been going around uh, for a while now. It's picking up some steam. 
And I agree with that. Um, Kobe Bryant has been basically like a cancer for the organization ever since he retired. And even before he retired, in fact, um, where he really hurt the team in terms of transitioning to the future. Uh, during the last few years of his career, especially after he got his injury, um, I think it was 2013, his Achilles heel, um, he really hurt the team afterwards. He didn't really support the team in terms of uh, building an atmosphere where other players wanted to join. I mean, the guy, you know, is, is ruthless. He's egocentric. And again, that may work for many things like Jordan um, as well in terms of winning. But in terms of recruiting and, and, and making an impact afterwards, you really hurt, you really hurt the organization. Um, and now look where the, where the Lakers are at. Um, in terms of Magic Johnson, Magic, please just stick to what you do best, which is your own businesses, um, being an ambassador to the NBA, that whole interpersonal, charismatic persona that you got, that works great. But when you are an executive, when you are in an executive position, things don't work out. So please, please, in the future, do not accept any more of these roles if they offer it to you because it's clear that you don't really want it. You can't really handle it. It's too limiting for you in terms of your greatness. So don't accept these positions. Stick to what you do best. Um, you know, get more into ownership and that kind of a thing. But do not try to fulfill any of these executive roles where you got to make decisions that you're clearly not ready for. And in terms of LeBron, LeBron, please stop crying. Stop crying about Magic leaving, that you were surprised that Magic left or whatever. Stop crying. Stop crying about the, the, the way things didn't work out for you in Los Angeles. You know what? You made a decision, okay? Like you made a decision to leave Cleveland the first time. You made a decision to leave the Miami Heat to go back to Cleveland. Um, and now you made a decision to go to the LA Lakers like a mercenary to finish out your career. An easy way out to get the most money, the most publicity, the most whatever. As a fan, as a sports fan, okay, not from man to man and personal decisions, but as a fan, I didn't like it. It just seems so weak to cop out and go to the next best thing. It seems so easy so convenient and so i'm not unhappy per se that you didn't make the playoffs for the first time in a gazillion years right so stop crying you made a decision now you got to stick to it now moving on to baseball um but baseball let's start off with the boston red sox and alex Cora specifically the manager of the boston red sox there was an article on ESPN about this controversial situation, possibly brewing, in terms of a racial divide. You see, the winning teams in Boston, Boston, they won the World Series last year, right? They were invited to the White House. And this has become a thing now because, of course, the current administration. No one really wants to go to these visits or, if they're, or there's some kind of controversy, right? Some people from some from some people within the team go, and some others from the team don't go, and that's that's been the case with the NFL, with the Patriots, for example, um, and so forth. So now you have the Boston Red Sox. You had some players who didn't want to go to the White House because they basically disagree with the politics or the behavior of our current president, and you had others. That did decide to go because whether they agree with the politics of the man or the administration or simply because they saw it as an opportunity to visit the highest office in the world, you know, and keep it in historical context and be like, wow, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm definitely going to represent my organization and go. So that's pretty much what happened in terms of the Boston Red Sox. Some players went. Some players did not. Alex Cora made a decision, and he had been hinting for quite a while that he wasn't going to go. No disrespect to the president or to the office. 
he didn't go because he felt, and many agree, that the president, the administration, basically failed Puerto Rico, especially with this um, Hurricane Maria situation. So in other words, Alex is upset that really the president, the administration, have basically have failed to make any real impact in terms of the recuperation of Puerto Rico due to Hurricane Maria. And I don't know if you guys remember, but um, if you look up YouTube or whatever and you check out the president's visit to Puerto Rico when he was just throwing bounty paper and shit like that to, to the crowd, it's really disgusting. Really disgusting. And that's really... If you just look at that, that'll give you um, an outline as to the kind of behavior uh, and 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 um, a perspective on how these people in the administration are handling the situation with Puerto Rico. It's pretty obvious they don't really care. So I can't disagree, obviously, with Alex's decision. Um, I would have done the same thing. Because you have to make a personal choice. And if you don't agree with something, as something is so big and impactful, then heck, why am I going to go and be pretend to be I'm happy going to the White House um, to get some recognition for a job that I did when you can't even fucking do your own job and take care of people um, that you're supposed to, Commander-in-Chief? So no, I wouldn't have gone. Um... Now, in terms of the players, and, and it's funny how this worked, right? Because Alex, who's Puerto Rican, um, and the majority of the team, that uh, the, the, the minorities or the, or the people of color on the team, they didn't go. They did not go. But you know who did? The white players went. And uh, Martinez went too. He's Cuban. They went. So that's why you had this article on ESPN, you know, this controversy, right? So what do you make of that? Is this a racial divide? People of color clearly made a stand. They did not go to the White House. The the white folks, they went. So what do you make of that? In either case, Alex took care of business, right? His business is to manage the organization, manage his team, get them to win on the field, Right? To have that cohesiveness, that camaraderie together on the field. And he did that. They're winning. After a horrendous start, they are winning. Um, I believe they're in third place in their division behind uh, the Yanks in Tampa Bay. So kudos to, to Alex um, for keeping you know things in perspective and just doing his job. Basically, right, keeping focused on his job, which is to win games. Um, regardless of what decisions you make outside of the field. And I can't really question the the white players who went. Um, you know, if they agree with, the, with, with Trump's policies or politics, that's on them. If they um, wanted to take the opportunity to go because it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, they may never win again, they may never be invited back to the White House and the highest office in the land, I can't really criticize that either. I can't. It's a decision that, you know, a person has to make. They have their own reasons to do so. And that's part of the beauty of agreeing to disagree, right? Or just simply having simple respect and not taking that and carrying it out to the field. So apparently that's the, been the case. Alex and the team have, you know, managed to keep things in perspective and they're doing what they got to do on the field, which is win games. So kudos to Alex Cora, to the, to the players, to the organization um, for, you know, being able to chew gum and, and walk at the same time. Now, in terms of other lesser critical news um, in baseball, so kudos for the Yankees because despite some injuries, especially like with Aaron Judge and so forth, and um, and key injuries to other players, they've been they've been winning. Um, they've been pretty much um, neck and neck with Tampa Bay. Um, I didn't check out uh, yesterday's scores, uh, but they were I think half a game behind Tampa Bay. Good job Yankees, there. God Almighty, what I'm saying. Uh, being that I'm a Mets fan. 
But anyway, so the Astros, the Houston Astros, my favorite team, my favorite team, um, 2017 World Series champs. They lost the American League Championship Series to Boston last year. Uh, what an offense. Um, and what a team. I mean, they really love to play. Alex um, Bregman, you got George Springer. I mean, this kid is having a monster season, George Springer. You have uh, Jose Altuve, who's injured right now. He started on fire, um, but, you know, he's been injured. And so either because of the injuries, or right, he started to regress. So hopefully he gets back. He's on the injured list still, I think, for another 10 days. So hopefully he'll be back and back to hitting. What a great, tremendous player. And then we have um, Carlos Correa, Correa, right, from Puerto Rico. So a great shortstop. Um, and, of course, you have Justin Verlander, you know, this guy who just, he's 37 years old, I think, but he pitches still. He's so, he's so dominant, and he's so laser-focused, and what leadership he provided to that ball club. So, I mean, the whole team is very talented, but those are my favorite players. George Springer, Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, uh, who started a little slow, now is on fire, and Justin Verlander. And they love to play. If you check out how they how they play, I mean, you can see the passion and enthusiasm um, in everything that they do. And, and it's that's what reminds you of being a little kid again and why you chose this sport as your favorite sport. Check out the Houston Astros. Check out George Springer's Inside the Park Home Run and the reaction in the clubhouse, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, moving on to the Mets, my New York Mets, underachieving. What's new? Inconsistent. What's new? Disappointing. What's new? You know, that for the first time in many years, they have great offense. They have much more offensive power than years past. And just as they start doing good, they fall apart. Now what's not working is their pitching, a staple um, in their organization. Mediocre at best, at best. Even Jacob DeGrom, I mean, MVP, uh, Cy Young Award winner, excuse me, last year. After two fantastic outings to start the season, He's been different. Noah, what's happened to you, Noah? Inconsistent with a capital I, frustrating with a capital F. Uh, Matt, Wheeler, you know, um, I could go on and on. Very disappointing. Cano, without the steroids, now you're nothing. I mean, what's going on? Um, Mickey Calloway. I never even knew who Mickey Callaway was before the Mets got him, really. Um, he's not doing so hot. I don't, I'm not convinced on him and haven't been convinced on him. But I try not to make a judgment when you don't really know because you got to give it a chance, right? I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I'm not really seeing or hearing anything that really blows my mind about this guy or just... Makes me feel confident about him. So I hope he starts turning it around for the team. Um, instead of saying some just dumb crap or whatever, basic crap, basic talking points. Just get the, to get the team going in a different direction. The GM made some moves. He got some players. You got some young kids here. It's time to fucking win. Now. Moving on to other teams in baseball. So the Phillies, even though Bryce Harper, uh, you know, $330 million man is, is underachieving, he's, um, he's made an impact in terms of attendance and interest in the, in the ball club. And the Phillies are winning. They got a great team. Um, a lot of players, Andrew McCutcheon, uh, Rea Multo, Segura. I mean, you got a lot of players in that team. Um, I think Osuna's on that team too. Um, they're just doing good. They're doing good. They're number one right now in the National League East. Um, so kudos for the Phillies organization. The Padres signed, uh, of course, Manny Machado. He's doing okay. They've been competitive. He's doing all right, like I said. Definitely doing his thing on the field. He's been okay offensively. Still early. So let's see what happens. Um, but, um, you know, he could have gotten to a big, uh, big market team and he didn't, right? So 
you know, I, I don't have a problem definitely with Manny being on San Diego, that's for sure. In terms of Trout, the $430 million man. Austin Trout. Man, could have possibly signed for more. Uh, Los Angeles Angels. But they haven't been in the playoffs in all the seasons that Trout has been in Major League Baseball, which I think is seven now. So, you know, all this money, they got Pujols. They got Pujols in the, the, the second part of his career, which I knew it was a mistake to offer him so much money um, for a player uh, over, their, over the age of 30. I think he was 31 at the time. Um, and, of course, he hasn't produced like he did the first half of his career. Um, so you got Alex, I mean, excuse me, you got Austin Trout is this, the, all with all the wonderful stats that these, uh, analytics do, you know, with the war and the on-base percentage and the OPS, whatever. Where is the winning? That's what I want to know. Where is the winning? Because if you don't win, what's the point? What is the point? Is it all about individual stats and all that? It's about winning. Winning and the LA Lake, excuse me, the Los Angeles Angels haven't won. They haven't been in the playoffs in all of Trout's short career. Do want to give kudos to uh, Pujols for becoming uh, what a hitting machine he was. I mean, he just recently got over 2,000 RBIs. Um, he recently, I think, passed uh, A Rod for uh, in, in terms of over 3,000 hits. Um, and I think he's uh, 600 plus home runs um, or something to that effect. Um, but the guy obviously is uh, he's one of the greatest hitters of all time. Um, and of course, he's, he's on the latter part of his career, no doubt about it. But it's a beautiful thing um, to remember and put in perspective, especially during these analytical days nowadays, you know, just... Um, Look at those accomplishments, and that's that speaks a lot of consistency, longevity, um, and he was clutch too. Look up his numbers. So credit to uh, Albert Pujols. Now moving on to um, other honorable um, subject in regards to sports, like boxing. Uh, don't want to take too much time, but basically Canelo and Daniel Jacobs. I knew how that was going to go down. Canelo, again, proving that he's hitting the peak of his career. Um, he wins even when he's not at his best. Um, he continues to adapt and get better. Um, his his body shots, his, his underrated defense. I mean, the guy is just, he's a winner. He's a moneymaker and he's a winner. Even though I have some questions about him in regards to steroid use. But bottom line is he's a winner and he's a moneymaker. Definitely looking forward to Errol Spence Jr. versus Crawford. Uh, whenever that can be made, that'll be a fantastic effing fight. I mean, what two fighters. Those guys are tremendous, tremendous. Um, Loma, Lomachenko. Is there anything for Lomachenko um, in his division? Um, and Triple G. Triple G cutting off with Abel Sanchez, um, his manager for years. What does that mean? I mean... What new tricks could Triple G possibly learn from this uh, new trainer, Banks? I mean, you're 37 years old. I mean, is there anything new you could really learn? I don't think so. Remains to be seen. Um, but certainly Triple G, one of my favorites. Definitely who I felt belt, uh, beat Canelo the first time and, and maybe even the second. Uh, certainly, I'm looking forward to that third fight. Um, but anyways... Let's see what happens. Now, moving on to current events. Got. Got. Disaster. Got. Disaster. Tomorrow, well, today, actually, is the season finale. The season uh, finale. The series finale. Uh, and after much controversy over the last, uh, the last episode, um, and really the season... We'll see how this 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 ends, um, but I gotta say that last episode really disappointed me. Um, 
everything about the the beauty in what uh, the mother of dragons, the great Khaleesi, the breaker of chains was building was just really disappointing to see it all just f and fall apart. I mean, burning innocent people, um, you know, making things so personal. Um, it just it was just so fucking weird. It was so strange. It was so disappointing. Jamie dying with uh, Cersei. I mean, what better way could they go? You know? And come on. That's not what we wanted as fans. We wanted the worst death for Cersei or something. Some kind of real vindictive uh, revenge type of thing. So I could go on and on and on. Um, like a lot of fans are pointing out. Um, again, just I was disgusted really with last uh, with the last episode. I don't know if I could really ever quite look at the series the same. Um, it's been disappointing because you invest years, you invest time in watching these things, and then uh, for it to kind of go in a certain way is just it's just so disappointing, you know, that this uh, that she would turn this way. It's almost like. What was the point of building her up then so much so we can so we could see how crazy a person can get, how crazy a woman could get who can't harness her feelings, a woman in power, a woman who's ambitious, who could just go batshit crazy, or the storyline predictable about the Targaryens, um, uh, going crazy because the Mad King was crazy and so forth. I mean, I don't know. You know, it was just, it was just disappointing. It was predictable and shallow and I didn't think the series was gonna go that way which obviously they did um, and he's talking about you know the signs were there yeah the signs were fucking there I didn't think you would actually go through with them you know what I mean I mean damn but anyways so we'll see how this season ends um, how the series will end tonight I'm gonna watch it because I already invested so much time but you know hope for the best Hope that there's something that John could show something um, and not be so fucking weak like he was in the last episode. That was really disgusting. Just like I was disgusted by the long, by the uh, uh, the episode, episode three when they fought the Night King and he didn't have a chance to fight the Night King. So disappointed in that. Now, turning to politics, um, just want to end with this question. Do women really vote for other women? Do they think that other women can win? If the answer is yes, then why is polling so low for Kamala Harris, Amy Klobuchar, Kristen Gillibrand, and Elizabeth Warren? These are the women that are running for president of the United States. And, you know, they're not really polling as well. They're not polling as high as the guys. The, the polling right now is led by Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, and Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Uh, you know, white guys. Um, you know, so what happened to this diversity thing and, and the women thing? I ask fellow women, um, you know, what is it? Why is it, in fact, that women vote? Why didn't women vote enough for Hillary Clinton back in 2016? So it's a very interesting question. Why is it um, that women are not winning? Um, why is it that more non-college educated whites voted for Trump than Hillary, specifically women? So it's a question out there for you women. What, what is that dynamic all about? Now, it's still too early, of course, but these women got a lot of moving to do if they're going to... Um, you know, catch up. So even though the midterm elections brought in more women in Congress than ever before, that was a beautiful thing. There's more women in office. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, but like Hillary said, can the biggest glass ceiling be broken um, anytime soon? So remains to be seen, right? So anyways, that's the conclusion of Ricky's episode 10. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, look uh, for the future in regards to what we're gonna do is we're going to now expand to other forms of social media. Um, gotta get the word out. The format is gonna be one segment or one uh, topic at a time. So let's say like sports, for example, or politics, 
um, or current events. And they're going to be much shorter videos. Um, got to make the point. Got to make it quickly. Uh, but definitely look forward also to another Modern Man Evolution segment. That should be coming up next week. Probably on pets. Um, being a pet owner. But anyways, thank you for tuning in to Ricky's Corner. Peace.